All right, it's time to put the rafters up, so let's walk through some logic here. Um... Hi, I'm Brian. <laughs> <laughs> There's a couple minor issues because of the fact that, you know, one we're using wood, which can bend and twist, which it has and will continue. Um, another is that this, this rafter that you see here is more than one piece of wood. It's actually three pieces of wood. So that introduces another little wrinkle that we've got to deal with. Um, so this is just a test. I've just got this kind of laying up here right now. Um, I'm gonna, as I said, I'm gonna treat these rafters a little bit and I haven't done that yet, but I'm just testing out how this is gonna fit using the rafter ties that I've got and the and the rafters. I just wanted to set some in place and kind of get a look at things. Again, because I'm using multiple pieces of wood and everything, so here's kind of the logic of what I'm gonna do. I know from left to right, you know, for sure where I want my rafters to be, right? Two feet on center. I know exactly where I want them to be. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna place before I even put the rafters up, I'm going to place my rafter tie exactly where I want it, exactly where I want that rafter to fall, right? I'm going to, I'm going to place that little notch right where I want it to be. So I'm going to do that along the way, kind of, you know, at the one end and then in, the, in this, you know, on top of a beam, on top of a beam over here, and then at the end again. And a close-up of what's going to happen here is... So I'm going to place those rafter ties without any rafters in them. I'm going to put them where they go and secure them. And then I will come with the rafters and put the rafters into place. And the reason I'll do that is because then I can maneuver. I can maneuver this way to try and get these things to meet up tight. Um, and I can maneuver up and down. You can see because because this beam is, is kind of twisting and doing weird things, um, you know, it's not exactly... You know, the idea on paper would be that this, be, this, this rafter coming from the low side would touch the, the low corner of this beam, the, the corner to this side, and this other corner would be kind of, because that would be traveling up, right? It's a, it's a shallow angle, but it would be traveling up. This other side would kind of float above this beam a little bit. Well, that's not actually, turns out, the way this beam has started to kind of be crooked, these two rafters these two pieces of wood might lay nice and flat on top of this beam because it's kind of tilted at an angle. So anyway, the point is if I put the rafter ties in place first, I can then maneuver these boards however that I want them to be so that they, so that they, so that the, the, oh gosh, the joint, the joint that's created here falls kind of as close to the middle of this beam as possible and that I get the heights of the two pieces because I really want this to act like one piece of wood, right? I want it to look and feel like one piece of wood. So I need these to be the same height as you can see right now, they are not. And I know that's minor, but I mean, I'm gonna be putting purlins on top of here and a metal roof on top of this. So I don't want a lot of undulation up here. I want that as flat as possible. Um, so that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I think my logic is gonna be to place the rafter ties where they belong and then maneuver the rafters so that things fall where they need to fall as far as uh, positioning of the individual rafter pieces. So I think that's gonna be my logic. Uh, obviously it'd be nice if this were just one board and I just laid it across all this. And it would also be nice if this wood wasn't kinda doing funny things, but uh, it is, it's wood, that's what it does. So we've gotta deal with that. But you can see, I mean, as, as a quick little test here, you know, I've created one long piece of wood here as a rafter. That's one rafter of, I believe I need about 18. Um, so I'm gonna treat this wood and I'm gonna, I'm gonna do as I said here, I'm gonna, I'm gonna place these rafter ties where they belong because that's where the wood belongs. So I'm gonna make it be there. And uh, as far as the other kind of variables, as far as tightness here and height, of each of the boards. I should be able to play with that before I attach the board to the rafter tie. So I can I can play with it a little bit. So that's what I'm gonna do. All right, so this is the test. I have secured the rafter ties along the way in place there where they belong and just drop the wood in. The wood is the, the sorry, the, uh, the rafter is not secured to the rafter tie yet. It's just kind of dropped into the slot. Um, so it looks like it's going to work. Um, that's three pieces of wood right there. You will see a little undulation, but I mean, that would be, 
even if this were one piece of wood, there'd still be kind of undulation there. And where the two pieces of wood meet at the joint, currently there is a little bit of a, a little bit, I don't know if you can see it right here, but there's a little bit of a step between those two. But again, I can manipulate that, that one board up, down, and a little bit side to side, just a tiny bit, and, and I can squeeze the two tight before I secure the rafter to the rafter tie. So I should be able to make that one nice continuous board. Now, it's gonna have as much undulation and, and bowing as, as a single piece of wood would, would have, maybe less actually, because a single piece of wood, if it were that long, not that it could be that long, but the longer the board gets, the more kind of bowing and things you get. So this might be even a little better. Also, whatever inconsistencies there are along the way, remember that the metal roof is not going directly on top of this rafter. There will be purlins one by three. So one or maybe three quarter actually by, by two and a half, I think. I don't know what a one by three actually measures in true measurement, but anyway, there'll be a, a little purlin, a little, that's the, the attachment piece of where, so that'll attach to the rafter and it'll be running this way kind of a little lattice work of it, and that's where the actual metal roof will screw into. So again, even if this has a little bit of play, you know, those purlins will act just as, in a sense, as far as spacing and, and flattening, they will act the same way that a piece of sheathing, a piece of plywood or OSB would act. So, so I think we can remove a lot of these little inconsistencies and end up with a nice, nice flat or, uh, I hate to say flat because it's sloped, but but you you know what I mean. Nice Can consistent me? roof slope. Can Hello? you see me? I see you. Um, you couldn't hear me screaming. Uh, I kind of did, but I was I was busy. <laughs> <laughs> I was just wondering. You if appear you... to be alive, so I, <laughs> <laughs> so I guess I it's okay. Shoulder. I'm good. I'm good now. All right, so that's our test. So I'm going to take these pieces down, and we're going to start to treat pre-treat a bunch of our wood for for pests mostly termites so uh we're just going to treat a bunch of wood and i'll place a bunch of these uh rafter ties and they should just drop right into place i have so very i have a, wait, I have a very quick. oh boy Pam's i have a very important announcement go ahead honey cannonball <laughs> yikes so here we got our uh our treating station set up here we got one over here we got some over here every three pieces of wood a 10 footer, an eight footer, and a 10 footer basically makes one of the rafters that are gonna span that distance. So we're kind of treating these boards three at a time. We're just treating them with a termite treatment just to give them a little more protection than if they were untreated. I don't think it needed to be treated wood, but to give them some protection is nice. They're not gonna be touching the ground or anything, but still, hopefully this will give them to last a little longer. So we've done some here the other day. Yesterday I did, so there's three rafters, three sets ready to go to make three rafters over there. We'll start installing them and we'll keep treating them over here and just kind of get as many done as we can today. There's a total of 18 sets of rafters from left to right, but the two end rafters are kind of positioned a little differently than the rest. So I'd be happy to get kind of the 16 interior rafters done today with, with a little help from Jared painting and Pam will be over here painting some stuff and then we'll start to install them as they start to dry. So that's what we're up to. I thought he said that um, he Brian, could put this in fast motion. Why didn't Brian set your station up in the shade, Pam? Good question. I don't know why he put it up in the sun like that. I know. I've, I've told him a million times the shade is over yonder. Skin cancer, serious deal. I did put on sunblock, though. UV rays are bad. Uh, yeah, I forgot about that, so I won't have a second ladder. Shoot. So maybe I should park the truck in there. I'm glad we planned everything out. Well. Shut up! <laughs> I fucking hate you. Shut! I'm glad you brought me over here to paint these boards when you get a full-time painter. <laughs> artist here living in the house. <laughs> okay, don't worry about it. It's good. Are you insured? Are you insured out here? This should be fine. Should be fine. Don't worry about it. I bet you never heard of Marshall Dillon say, Miss Kitty, have you ever thought of running away? 
settle down, would you marry me? If I asked you twice, would you really please? I see the said yeah, said a New York man, everything every time of night. His heart was a minute, he just told the kids that he looked away. Pam, you know you didn't do the edges. Brian, I'm not, you're not paying me to supervise. <laughs> I thought I turned it over. You didn't do the sides, Brian. She's using the staging area for her painting area now. That's up her whole routine. That's an OSHA violation. <laughs> Hey Brian, just recording. You ah. still? <laughs> I don't think he's actually doing anything. Things are avoiding work. <laughs> I'm just measuring here. I'm uh, I couldn't do this measuring until Jared got here. <laughs> I needed another person to keep Pam distracted so I could get this done. <laughs> So here are the boards treated. We mix some of our treatment together, so they're coming out a little more reddish, but when they dry, it's not gonna be very noticeable. But yeah, you can see some of the difference in color. Depends on the wood, you know, whether it's rough or smooth or, but it's not a huge difference, but there's a little bit of a difference. Got some over there. So we're just getting these going so that we can, I've now put the truck in place so that we can use it kind of as a scaffold. We're gonna start putting up some of our rafters now. Hey y'all, so Jaren and I made a bunch of progress the other day on these rafters. As you can see, I've actually got them all up except for the, the two end rafters, one out here and one over there. They'll actually be at a special distance than the rest uh, to fit the metal roof perfectly. And I'll actually end up cutting off some of these uh, beams to be just the right length. But I wanna make sure I have that exact, nice and square and the right distance for the metal roofing to fit from end to end without any cuts, hopefully. So here are the rafters in place. The thing I didn't realize when Jared and I put them up there is I should have been a little more careful. Um, I did not worry about how kind of how, where they were placed, how far, I mean, we put them in roughly the right spot, but we weren't exact about kind of how far they were hanging off the beam and whether they were all even along this edge. And therefore, you know, all the, the seams where they meet along the way since this is multiple pieces of wood for one one rafter it wasn't quite right so i had to do some adjustments and surprise surprise yet another string line so i used another string line 
running along this back edge. I put the first rafter on and the last rafter on and ran a string line so that each of these rafters kind of butts right up to that string line. I, don't know if you, I think you can see it there. There you go. So, so I repositioned all these and of course that makes the the middle of them all fall, you know, or the end of them fall in the middle of this post. And then there's another piece of rafter from this, sorry, beam, this beam to this beam, and it falls in the middle there. And then this last one hangs off and these should all, I didn't put a string line over here, but these should all line up at least really darn close, right? Within the tolerances of how long those actual uh, pieces of wood are. I mean, I didn't cut them or anything. So these are all, in this case, uh, 10 footers. So, so these are all 10 foot, 10 footer, eight footer, 10 footer. So this should, these should line up if those all line up. So they're close enough. I can tell just by looking at them, they're pretty darn close. So, so, so far, uh, so they're all in position, but as I said before, I just kinda, I didn't, because I wanted to have a little bit of play, a little bit of movement and the potential to take things out if I made a mistake anywhere, I haven't, I've only secured each of these rafter ties with two nails so far, which they actually take four. Um, and I haven't really attached the rafters themselves to the rafter ties. You can see for some of them, for the as I was putting these in place so that things wouldn't move after I got them set where I wanted them, I just kind of tacked them into place. So I kind of partially nailed one nail into this, from this rafter tie into this rafter. So, But now what I need to do is go and fill every nail hole and fill them in all the way and do that all along. So I'm about to spend quite a bit of time uh, just nailing all these things in. So... Um, I have a palm nailer at my disposal from our friends Craig and Nikki to use, uh, but uh, the spots get a little tight, so I might even use a hammer in some spots. I might just do a combination of the two, but I'm going to be spending a good bit of time here just nailing, so that's what I'm up to. And the next step after this will be purlins, so we'll check back shortly.